So good evening from Shenzhen. So actually, I apologize for having to do this remotely. Um, so today, I, I'm going to talk about a, uh, a work we, we have just recently done uh, about um, prediction market. Uh, so the title is Price Interpretability of Prediction Markets, a Convergence Analysis. Uh, this is a joint work with uh, a few of my colleagues, uh, uh, Dian Yu, uh, Jian Jun Gao, and uh, Wei Ping Wu. So uh, uh, let me just quickly introduce uh, the concept of prediction market. Uh, although I assume you know uh, this audience probably most of you are very familiar with. Um, so basically, uh, uh, the prediction market is an uh, uh, exchange market that people invented uh, for the purpose of um, trading the outcome of future events and ultimately uh, aggregate information uh, from the traders on particular topics of interest. Uh, so basically, uh, of course, we'll talk about more detail, but the way it works that traders uh, with different beliefs uh, trade on certain uh, contingent contracts uh, related to some uh, future events. Uh, for example, one typically, uh, you know, uh, a typical prediction market is about like a presidential or all type of elections. People can just uh, uh, trade shares of uh, different candidates and then uh, the, uh, uh, the market organizer can uh, again, uh, information uh, from these trades. Um, and of course, uh, one important concept in this market is the, uh, the market prices, uh, which indicate uh, basically the probability uh, of uh, each event. Um, and actually, of course, uh, in, the, in the past uh, few decades, there have been a lot of research about prediction market. And of course, the reason is that people already uh, witnessed uh, great success of this market in aggregating uh, information from uh, uh, from a different group of people. Uh, there have been a lot of uh, empirical research about the effectiveness of this market. Um, so although this market has been uh, uh, studied uh, quite a bit and also implemented in the, uh, in practice, um, there are still some, uh, we believe, some fundamental questions that, um, uh, you know, are, are not fully uh, yet answered. Um, so the first question uh, is uh, in this type of market. So traders, of course, will uh, trade these, uh, uh, you know, uh, these contingent uh, claims, and then uh, whether these traders uh, will eventually uh, reach a consensus about uh, the, uh, you know, uh, the, the the final state of the market. Um, and of course, uh, if they do uh, reach a consensus. So what is this consensus? Of course, this is very important because, of course, the, the goal of this market in the first place uh, is to understand. Uh, so what is a consensus of the traders? Um, or in other words, uh, so what does the uh, uh, limiting price uh, converge to? Because, of course, the limiting price uh, represents uh, some, some sort of the uh, consensus. Uh, so this is basically the, uh, the motivation of this work. Uh, so we try to provide some answers uh, to these questions. Of course, um, there are still some open questions, uh, but hopefully at the end of the talk, uh, so we, we get some more insight about uh, these questions. Uh, so let me just introduce uh, the uh, basic model uh, we are going to use. So we, we are going to consider a prediction market with this arrow, the blue type of securities. Uh, so basically, this is a, a type of uh, market where there are um, uh, I different exclusive outcomes. And uh, traders will trade this, uh, these claims. Uh, and e if each event I uh, happens in the end, and then the uh, market organizer will pay the uh, trader uh, S, uh, uh, $1 uh, if the corresponding event happens. We assume these outcomes are mutually exclusive and also exhaustive. Uh, and we assume there is a central market maker. And the market maker, all the trade have to go through the market maker. And uh, these securities are uh, issued by the market makers. And of course, in the end, the market maker will pay the traders uh, after the, uh, uh, the the event realizes. Uh, and of course, uh, the reason for we have a market trader uh, maker is that uh, this will resolve this uh, thin market problem. So basically, trader uh, can always trade with the market maker. So uh, basically, this facilitate uh, the information collection process. Okay. Uh, and then of course, uh, for the market maker, by important uh, thing you need to consider is that it, it, it needs some trading mechanisms. So basically, you need to have some mechanisms to, to run the market. Um, and 
uh, in the literature, there has been uh, a lot of different mechanisms that people have studied and uh, basically, you know, uh, various properties of these mechanisms have been shown. Uh, so for the sake of time, I'm not going to go through each of them. Uh, this is also not uh, exhaustive. Uh, but basically, the point is that there have been uh, quite a few uh, market making uh, mechanisms. Um, so here uh, in this work, so actually we are going to consider a different perspective. Uh, in the uh, uh, market making uh, mechanisms. Uh, so uh, uh, I will also explain, of course, this has uh, uh, interesting connections with other uh, mechanisms, but it has some advantages in terms of the way, uh, you know, uh, we're going to perform the analysis. Uh, so in this work, we are going to consider a, uh, we call multivariate utility based market maker. Um, so basically, uh, in this perspective, uh, the market maker will keep uh, two important uh, variables uh, during the trading process. Uh, one is the uh, total cash it has collected uh, from the uh, the traders. Uh, it could be uh, positive or negative. And the other uh, important variable is uh, the security positions it has accumulated so far. So this is a vector. So each entry of the vector represents how many uh, units of each uh, uh, each continent claim it has sold. Uh, to the uh, uh, the traders. Of course, it also indicates the, the amount of payoff it needs to pay uh, for each outcome. Uh, so how does this market work? So basically, uh, we're receiving a certain order queue. Uh, so suppose you already have some base order uh, uh, accepted. Then we're receiving a new order delta Q. Then this market maker will compute a price for this order using the following optimization problem. So basically, we calculate the minimum amount of um, uh, a price it has to charge in order to maintain a certain utility level. Uh, so here, this is a utility, is a multi-dimensional utility function. Remember, so this Q is the payout for each uh, outcome. So basically, this uh, vector inside this uh, parenthesis is basically the, uh, uh, the surplus or, or the, uh, you know, uh, the profit uh, for each state the market maker can make. And then basically we assume so the, the market maker will charge the price that making the utility at the new state at least as large as the uh, before the trade. Okay, Of course, this is quite a natural uh, way of running this market. Um, uh, we do have some assumptions on this utility functions. We assume it's continuous uh, and concave uh, also uh, the domain is an empty convex and zero belongs to the uh, uh, domain of this utility function. We also assume this is a monotone function, which is also uh, very natural assumptions. Um, so first of all, we want to have some basic properties of this way of running the market. Uh, so basically, we have the first result that uh, using this way of running the market, there is always a, uh, you can always find a, 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 a unique price. Uh, to charge uh, by solving that optimization problem. And also this, there are some uh, natural properties uh, about this price, okay? Uh, that basically if there's a, 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 a unit order comp, uh, then it will be charged a unit price. Uh, so then we, we show that this uh, perspective of considering this utility function uh, is essentially uh, equivalent to some of the past mechanisms people have already studied, uh, including uh, the cost uh, function mechanism, which is uh, uh, widely uh, used uh, type of mechanism. Uh, so you can view this also as a, a, a different type of framework. Uh, so basically, um, it can be equivalent to a cost function mechanism. And also, of course, uh, naturally, this utility function, you can also uh, view this as a risk measure uh, perspective. So basically, uh, you can view this uh, joint uh, unified framework. Uh, however, just in terms of the uh, utility function, we, we do believe there is some advantage uh, advantage uh, because uh, for the cost function, uh, it has to satisfy uh, some properties, including like translation invariance properties, uh, making the construction of this function uh, sometimes not that easy. However, a utility function could be uh, easier to construct sometimes. Uh, so in the paper, we do give some examples um, of uh, sometimes choosing utility function could be easier, uh, but uh, at least uh, it is another perspective that uh, we can uh, view uh, the way the, the, the market maker runs the market. 
Uh, so this is a basic setting. So remember our uh, original motivation is to consider, so whether this, uh, after the trading process, uh, the uh, uh, there is a consensus of the trader. So basically we need to consider a, a dynamic setting. So how the traders interact with the market maker and uh, how this process uh, will converge um, uh, and what where does it converge to, okay? So therefore we are going to consider a, a dynamic setting uh, so again, so we consider the IOD Blue Security I state and J traders. Uh, there's a market maker with utility U, uh, according to what we just described. Um, and uh, also each trader will have a, uh, a current cash position and has a security position. So basically how many shares of each state uh, it has already purchased uh, in the past. Uh, and also we assume there is a, a, a utility function for the trader. Uh, for each trader, it has uh, its own utility function, also a multidimensional uh, function. Um, um, and of course, we also have some basic assumptions, continuous, strict, concave, um, and, and the, the domain is uh, convex, uh, and the, uh, the recycled uh, cone uh, of this include the unit vector, and also increasing. Um, now here, I also want to point out it doesn't change. So it only trades because of um, it has a utility function. It has a concave utility function. So if, if, if it sees opportunities uh, to gain according to this utility function, it will trade with the market maker. Okay. Um, so here we also make some assumptions so each time there will be a trader coming to the market and the trader is myopic so basically as you consider the current trade and uh the trader knows as uh, the structure of the uh, uh, market maker's utility function and the current uh, position of the uh, uh the market maker however the trader doesn't know anything about the other traders preference and the uh you know it doesn't know other traders uh, beliefs uh, and we will consider the trading uh, dynamics. Uh, so starting from zero, uh, each traders from zero, and also the market maker uh, from initial uh, wealth level uh, uh, zero. And then uh, we are going to start the trading process. So the basic traders come, if he sees opportunities to gain utility from the trade, you will trade. And then we will consider the whole process. Of course, I uh, realize that the, the trading sequence will matter in this case. Uh, so we define um, some properties about a, a, a trading sequence. So basically we allow uh, any uh, sequence as long as it satisfies certain property we call infinite participation. So basically each trader will come at least, you know, infinite amount of times uh, to the market. Okay, so uh, this is a basic assumption uh, we have and we denote all the trading sequence satisfies this property uh, by this file. And then each time uh, basically there will be a trader coming to the market and then the way the trader uh, trade with the market maker is that um, it will propose amount of shares I want to buy. And then because we assume the trader knows the market maker's utility function, so he will know what is the price the market maker will, will, will set for this, um, this quantity. And then he, uh, this trader will consider uh, what uh, order quantity uh, to select in order to maximize uh, his or her utility, uh, given that this price is set by the market maker according to the market maker's utility function. Uh, so this can be represented also as, as an optimization problem. And actually we can reformulate uh, into a simpler uh, formulation. So basically we will uh, choose a vector Z, uh, that is the, uh, the, the, the level of the outcome um, to maximize uh, his uh, utility at the end of the trade, okay? Uh, so next we present some basic result uh, about this uh, outcome of this trading. So remember, so again, so uh, these traders will come sequentially to the uh, market um, in a, you know, different uh, orders, uh, it, but it has to satisfy this infinite participation property. So we want to understand what is the final status of the market. So whether it will converge to a certain state, and if yes, then what state it will converge to. So then the first uh, result is about the whether it will converge uh, to a certain state and what property this final state uh, uh, will be. Uh, to introduce our result, uh, we have the notion of a Pareto optimal allocation. Uh, this is uh, 
final state of the uh, um, the uh, uh, the wealth allocation. Um, and basically, uh, we show that uh, if the U and V, the G functions satisfy our previous assumptions and also continuously uh, differentiable, then uh, this wealth allocation uh, will uh, generate by any sequence will converge and will converge to a Pareto optimal allocation. Uh, so here we also have some additional assumptions on this uh, U function, uh, but basically under these assumptions, uh, we show that uh, the final limiting allocation will be a Pareto optimal uh, allocation. Uh, so basically we answer the question, so will this uh, uh, consist of converge? And the answer is yes, under some condition and the limiting allocation uh, is Pareto optimal. Uh, and actually this result extends some previous result in the literature. Uh, so there have been some discussions under various settings. Uh, for example, this, uh, uh, this work by Sessi and the, uh, uh, Vaughan, uh, show the result for binary market and uh, uh, from, from Gillow and Reid uh, show the result for uh, risk measures but here we allow more general utility functions and we allow for multiple uh, securities uh, so this basically extend the result uh, in the literature uh, and also in addition we prove the product optimality of the limiting allocation okay uh, so then uh, next we look at the question of uh, if it converges to product optimal so what is the limiting price? So this is, of course, a very important question for the market maker. Uh, so next, we analyze this limiting price. So first of all, we define the limiting price um, by using the gradient of the T function. This is also a pretty standard way of defining a price during the process. Uh, in the literature, there has been some study of the limiting price. Uh, in particular, for example, the uh, uh, the work by Sessi and uh, Vaughan uh, show that uh, uh, for certain uh, utility function, we can have a, a heuristic method to approximate the limiting price. Actually, it shows that the uh, they show that the limiting price will depend on the order, and then they give some heuristic way of finding the uh, limiting price. So here's our main findings. So first of all, we show for certain type of utility functions, for example, exponential utility function or certain set of risk measures based utility function, actually the limiting price does not depend on the trading sequence. So no matter how the trading sequence is, as long as satisfy the infinite participation property, it will converge to a unique uh, price. Uh, this is a very interesting result. And then for other type of utility functions, uh, we show that the function, uh, the, the limiting price is the uh, uh, weighted power mean of the initial beliefs, although the weight does depend on trading order. And for certain uh, type of utility functions, we show the uh, we give an approximation of the weight, uh, which performs quite well uh, in uh, empirical studies. Yes, uh, we're, um, we're reaching time, so we'll have to Sure, wrap up yeah, soon. Uh, yeah, let me uh, quickly wrap up, yes. So uh, uh, just as I described, so for exponential utility functions, this type of utility functions, uh, we show the limiting price does not depend on the trading sequence. Actually, the limiting price is a geometric mean of initial beliefs, but that doesn't depend on the trading orders. Um, and then for risk measures, so this type of utility functions, uh, if this alpha is a, a, a divergence type of a risk measure, again, uh, we show this doesn't depend on the uh, sequence. So this is a weighted power mean, and this have a closed form uh, 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 final price. And then for other type of common utility functions, uh, like CRRA utility function, uh, we show this does depend on the uh, 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 sequence, uh, but it always can be represented in such a form with different weight uh, of this, uh, uh, these parameters. Um, and we, we did some uh, experiment uh, validating this uh, result. And finally, for Haro type of utility function, uh, we also give an approximation a heuristic uh, for the uh, uh, limiting price. And this is actually similar to uh, the work in the literature. However, uh, our approximation function uh, appears to be uh, uh, more accurate uh, than some of the previous methods uh, proposed in the literature. Okay. So uh, uh, sorry for being a little bit fast uh, because of the time, uh, but uh, to summarize, so uh, uh, in this work, uh, so we first propose a multivariate utility based market. Um, uh, from this perspective, we can perform some analysis uh, about the uh, limiting properties of the uh, price. Uh, we show that we converge under certain conditions 
Um, and then uh, for various several utility functions, uh, we give uh, some close for formula for the limiting price. For others, uh, we give some approximation uh, result uh, for the limiting price. Uh, so let me uh, stop here. And uh, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to, uh, uh, to raise the questions. We don't have time, but uh, maybe one question, like if, yes, please. Hmm? Uh, no, just talk. Hi, so um, something I'm curious about is the uh, assumption that these agents participate in the market, they know what the shape of the utility function is for the market maker, but not for their fellow participants. Um, mm -hmm. If I imagine myself as getting a prediction market, I might have, I think that I might have some idea about what the utility functions of both are, but not a perfect idea. How heavily do mm -hmm. these specific results depend on that assumption, and do you think they might hold to relax for those two?